Howdy, friends. It's me again, Bags Cubed, not dead. Now, we're doing something different, as you can see. Still doing the, the Diamonds and Pearls video when that comes out. But, in the meantime, because the Billy Joel Vinyl Collection Volume 2 is coming out, I thought, why not do the first one? Which I finally bought after not doing it. And I got it on sale for like a very good price. Very, very good price. Now without further ado, I am going to get into it, but in more detail after this cut. As you can see on the sticker, it indicates that this is Volume 1. And Volume 2 came out two years after this one. I think this came out in 2021 and the new one's coming out this year, so two years. It includes... Eight albums being Cold Spring Harbor, Piano Man, Street Life Serenade, Turnstiles, The Stranger, 52nd Street, and, I'll explain this later, Songs in the Attic. Plus the previously unreleased Live at the Great American Music Hall, plus a 50-page booklet highlighting Billy's entire career, early career, up till that point. Man, I held that up too close to the camera for a little bit. Also, I'll explain also the Great American Music Hall thing as well. Now, when I got mine, it was in one of those little uh, spider, like, locking things that, like, locks it from all sides. And it was a little tight, so there's a little bit of denting on my copy. But to be honest, it's not, like, that big of a deal because this isn't the most elaborate cover design out there. It's just a record player with an ambiguously named Billy Joel thing. But, however, this does something a little different to other sets I've had to where... The spine is actually a slip cover. That's pretty cool. Billy Joel Collection Volume 1. And it includes a little editorial about Billy's career on the back. I think that's what it would be called. As well as all the albums that are shown. I am not going to bother reading it. Because I don't feel like it. Now, showing the side, it's just gray. Showing the back, also gray. Very creative. Instead of showing the first album quickly, also, uh, the, the spines of all the records, just so I don't have to do that later, because we all know I'll forget doing that, I will instead cut away and pull out the little booklet they give you first. <clears throat> Moving knife out of the way, because I don't need that anymore. This is the little soft, um, booklet that you get. It's not a hard cover, because it's only a soft cover. Also, not really a complaint per se, but to be honest, Billy only has about 14 albums, and it could have been possible that they could have released every album of his in one collection, but uh, whatever, it's alright to split them up, you know, give people a little breathing room from time to time, spread out releases, maybe do some fun stuff for the other ones. This is a quote by Billy Joel. You can't read it that well from this angle, but it's been a long time coming, putting all these albums in one package. It's a little intimidating, actually. It seems like a lot of work. I remember looking at each individual album and remember how much writing and recording and time and arranging and producing went into each album. Billy Joel. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna read all of this. And also, I'll actually just get a better angle and just cover it with hand. I will just flip through it to make up for the fact that I'm not reading all this because it is a 50 page thing and I don't want to make this video hyper long. So we got pictures of Billy Joel and his early career, you know, before he started selling out arenas, going everywhere, you know. We got the a single for a song called Nocturne, which was released under Phillips, which would not be Billy's label. An ad for Turnstiles, which is his fourth album. Oh, and then you have lyrics for songs, like his first album, Cold Spring Harbor, which was released in 1971, making it 50 years old as of two years ago. And also, Billy's least favorite, for reasons of the mixing was weird. Oh, no, wait. It would have been released on something. I guess that was under Phillips? So was Nocturne a song on 
this oh yes it's an instrumental i've never listened to cold spring harbor i only know things about the albums that i have listened to piano man which was billy's semi breakout in a way it got him some more recognition also 50 years old now with the songs piano man and captain jack on it being the most widely known singles from this album now under the cbs records label oh no wait that that was from mexico it looks like And uh, Piano Man was written based off of Billy's experience with being a piano man in a bar. Obviously, because of course he was. And a little quote by Paul McCartney and Garth Brooks, everyone's favorite two people. Street Life Serenade, an album I have not listened to. Released in 74, so almost 50 years old. With... If I remember correctly, I remember watching a video where he talked about writing this album, and I don't think he had as much material because two songs are instrumentals on here. Then you got Turnstiles when he returned back to New York and decided to, you know, just go back to New York. Therefore, Say Goodbye to Hollywood is the first single, I mean, song. And also, apparently, each person on this cover is based off of a song on... The album. And uh, Miami... is this. I believe this album had New York State of Mind, obviously. And Miami 2017, Seen the Lights Go Out on Broadway. There was a whole thing about Hollywood... Hollywood. New York would be going under. So Billy was like, if New York's going down, I'm going down with it. So he went back to New York also. Fun times. Fun times. And then what many consider his best, The Stranger, which actually started putting him on the map with Moving Out, The Stranger, even though I don't think that was a single, Just the Way You Are. Scenes from an Italian restaurant, Only the Good Die Young. She's Always a Woman. You know, a lot of good songs. Which actually made me more interested in Billy because I was not a big fan of the Piano Man album. Sue me, I just... I didn't really get into it. Maybe on the second listen, I'll actually like it more. And 52nd Street, his monumental album of the year winner album, because he won album of the year for that, with Big Shot, My Life, Zanzibar, which is underrated as Sin. Other good stuff from there. You got your single covers. And then Songs in the Attic which came out in 1981. However, there was another album between uh, 52nd Street and Songs in the Attic. That would be Glass Houses from 1980. I don't necessarily know why they skipped Glass Houses and instead chose to do Songs in the Attic instead. I don't know why they did that, because Glass Houses is in the next one, but then that makes an inconsistency where... They skipped one album to do his first live album, but I, I don't know, whatever, it's fine. And so this just includes, I remember the story behind this one was Billy was like, you know, I want to give some of my earlier stuff another chance to um, give these songs another chance to breathe, you know? And so that's where you get the live version of... of um. She's Always a Woman, which is the more famous version. Then you have Live at the Great American Music Hall from 1975, which was in between The Stranger and Turnstiles. Wait, whatever. Anyway, this would later be released for a record store day, giving it a wider release. But, I mean, it's record store day, so it's wider but more limited. And, uh, yeah. There's that booklet. I probably spent way too much time on it still. The first album is Cold Spring Harbor from 71, Billy's also least favorite album of his career, because of mixing issues making it sound like he was a squirrel. Also, when I meant She's Always a Woman, what I actually meant to say was She's Got Away. I know if people comment on this video, they'll call me a fool, because I messed up. I meant She's Got Away, not She's Always a Woman. Side one and side two. And also, this album was not originally made with a actual inner sleeve, so it just came with a 
plain paper one. We wouldn't get a proper one till the following album. Then we have his second one, with arguably one of his most memorable songs, Piano Man. Oh, I should probably show the backside too, shouldn't I? Ha ha ha. The backside, I'm pretty sure I showed this. Some of these have already been shown in like one of the big Cubed Boy record video videos I've done before, which will be another one this fall. Um, anyway. There's always going to be imperfections on these. Side one is just a track listing of the songs Travel and Prayer through uh, Captain Jack, which I guess was a hit. And then there's nothing on the other side because, I don't know, 1973. Side one and two. Street Life Serenade with a little painting of a city street, of course. Of course. The backside is the big man sitting on a chair with the track listing on the back. And then you... Oh, well, what do you know? I guess this one didn't have an inner sleeve either. I guess I don't need to pull them out if there's nothing specifically different about each one. Unless it, there's an inner sleeve. Anyway, side one is Street Life Serenade through Roberta. And side B is The Entertainer, which is kind of about Billy. Many people wonder, are you being a hypocrite? You have some success, then why are you complaining about it? Through The Mexican Connection, which is the other uh, instrumental track after Root Beer Hrag. One thing I have been noticing about each thing in this, which is, you know, it's always a gamble if you have a musical box set, I guess, is you don't know how full, how fully, like, the quality of the, the sleeves or the covers will be. So pretty much everyone I've had so far in this box has at least some sort of wearing on the top, which, whatever, it's just the tippy top. There's nothing on there. So... As long as, like, this stuff is fine and the spine is good, you're pretty much good. If the top or bottom is worn, you don't have to worry. But if you're very hyper-particular, then you might be slightly miffed about that. Same with, like, parts of inner sleeves being ripped, which doesn't necessarily matter. As long as it's not fully obliterated, then it should be fine. It's just a little annoying, if you catch my drift. <clears throat> Anyway, the inner sleeve this time is just Billy Joel and turnstiles. Also, there's a slight rip in the inner sleeve, as I just referenced, but it's on the side where there's literally nothing. It's just folded paper. And then the back side is the track listing, cream-colored and white text. Therefore, you can't really see it, but just take my word for it. It's there. An album I haven't heard, but I have heard various songs from some of these albums. Like, I have heard... Say Goodbye to Hollywood, New York State of Mind. Um, have I heard All You Want to Do is Dance? I'm thinking, I might be thinking of a different song. I have heard Prelude slash uh, Angry Young Men. Angry Young Man? Singular or plural? I don't know. But I will be listening to all these, including listening to the ones I already have listened to, which are... The Stranger, 52nd Street, Piano Man, all that jazz. I will also do the same for the following Billy Joel Collection Volume 2, which only has a few albums that I haven't listened to, and I think those are pretty much only um, River of Dreams, Fantasies and Illusions, and... Fantasies and Illusions or Fantasies and Delusions? And uh, the other live one that they give you, which is Live in Long Island. Anyway, now you have The Stranger, which is another one I've already listened to, and the one that actually got me into it, because I was apprehensive to continue after I wasn't a huge fan of Piano Man. And so you got Billy on the front, and then Billy at an Italian restaurant. Haha, -ha, scenes from an Italian restaurant. Which is pretty much three songs in one. Three, like, just... Three different songs mashed into one, because they're all a different style. Anyway, you got your guy with boxing gloves on. Backside is the tra uh, track listing slash lyrics. 
All of these are uh, pretty much been black and white so far. I have no problem with that, really. Side one is moving out through scenes from an Italian restaurant and Vienna through Everybody Has a Dream. I'm surprised this one didn't win um, or wasn't nominated for Best uh, alb al Album of the Year. However, he has had a lot of Grammy nominations for songs, and I'm pretty sure this was the first one for him to win an actual Grammy for, and I think it was for Just the Way You Are. I think, or it might have been Only the Good, Only the Good Die Young, or something like that. Next up, you got 52nd Street, which, as I said prior, was the only one of his to win uh, Album of the Year. But he was nominated a bunch of times for a bunch of different albums, as I'll probably say in the next time I make one of these videos on a Billy Joel thing. And also, this is the only album of his to have the track listing be on the back of the actual thing instead of being anywhere on the inside. Which is quite different compared to always having it on the inside. And you have a picture of Billy holding a trumpet. In a lot of album covers, he's holding something because, according to himself, he feels like he has big, giant hands. Therefore, he should be holding something as to not draw attention to the fact that he believes that they're so big. I don't know. Starting off something different, side two, which is Stiletto through 52nd Street, and Big Shot through Zanzibar on side one. <clears throat> Oh, golly. I really gotta make a better choice about when I cut away from things. Ironically, though, this is the only one that doesn't feature any sort of wear and tear on the top. Probably because it's a gatefold. If there was any, it's very small. But Songs in the Attic, the other one I haven't listened to, which is a live album of bits and bobs from Billy performing. And on the back it has a newspaper clipping about Billy Joel and about how this is not like a definitive live album, just like smatterings of stuff from when he was touring and giving his old stuff a second shot of stuff. Because this big part talks about how up until The Stranger some people didn't know of Billy, so he's just covering stuff from the past uh, four albums and giving them another shot at being known, which is how some people know she's got away from this album. And on the inside, you have a picture of pictures of Billy from around the years. Look at him. Look at how small he is. You can tell it's Billy Joel because he has Billy Joel's face, but as a child. And uh, Billy Joel early in his life and times is Billy Joel. Anyway, gotta close this up and pull out the inner sleeve. Billy Joel's live band that he toured with. Well, live band. Not really a live band. They were like just like Billy's friends, you know? And then Billy performing. Look at him. Isn't he such Billy Joel? Songs in the Attic, which is... Miami 2017, seeing the lights go out on Broadway through Everybody Loves You Now, to Say Goodbye to Hollywood through I've Loved These Days. I'm interested to listen to some of the other ones, or some of the live renditions of his ones. I think I've been surprised twice listening to Billy Joel. Um, once with Captain Jack from... Bill, uh, piano Man, because of one of the things he says in the first verse of that album. Oh, hold up. Glad I opened this up, but you actually get a another thing. You actually get a fold-out, <clears throat> uh, not poster per se, but a fold-out of the... Credits and also lyrics. And on the back, you get a picture of Billy at that time in, I believe, probably 81. So that's interesting. Glad I actually chose to look deeper into there. 
We all know I'm a professional guy who opens up things on my bedroom floor. It wouldn't be a Bags Cube video without some attempts at actually putting effort into something and then dropping the ball halfway through. Next, though, we have the special release given to... Oh, also, this one also doesn't have wearing on the top. Interesting, interesting. Weird why that happened to the other ones. It include, It's a live album from 1975. I guess it was recorded there at the Great American Music Hall. Which, don't know where that is, but I know it's in America. And this is different. You get uh, their black paper in their sleeve this time. Therefore, that means there's nothing, like, solely different about them, so I'll just cover them. Backside. It's just gray, so, you know. Nothing really different there. <clears throat> side A is introduction somewhere along the line. Roberta, Mexican Connection, Root Beer Rag, therefore ending off side one with two instrumentals. James, band introductions, introducing the band, obviously. You're My Home, You're So Beautiful, which is also an interlude, and Everybody Loves You Now. This one's upside down, so I gotta hold it like this. New York State of Mind, Benny and the Jets, which is an Elton John song. Travel and Prayer, and Delta Lady. And then the other side is The Entertainer, The Ballad of Billy the Kid, Ain't No Crime, and Weekend Song. Now, that'll do it for the Billy Joel Collection Volume 1. Stay tuned for maybe sometime in November if I buy... Volume 2 at that point, for me to make a video on Volume 2, where I talk more about his 80s albums. Well, yes, his 80s albums minus Songs in the Attic, because for some reason I still chose to do that weird release schedule. And I'll say what I know about them. Because I know a little bit more about the 80s ones than I do the 70s ones, because I've listened to more of them. Anyway, that'll do it. Uh, see you around. Didn't expect for this to be so long. Maybe if I would have skipped the book, it wouldn't have been like this. But uh, Diamonds and Pearls next. Bye.